Hello everyone, I'm Steve Adolf, and welcome to another edition of Practical Safe from the Dining Room Table. Today's topic is weighted shortest job first. Just what the SJF is that? Well, weighted shortest job first is the prioritization model used to sequence jobs, so it's like features, capabilities, and epics in SAFE to produce maximum economic benefit. So going through this is actually an exercise in understanding what work should we do first to get the best value. WSJF is used extensively in SAFE, and you can see from all the major backlogs, the portfolio backlog, the solution backlog, the program backlog, WSJF is key in organizing the work and prioritizing the work in those backlogs. Again, to give us the best economic outcomes. So this video is simply, what is weighted shortest job first? Why is it useful? How do we calculate weighted shortest job first? And how is weighted shortest job first used to facilitate the prioritization discussion of backlog items? Now, like all of these videos, uh, these are represent my personal opinions and perspectives and are based on experiences with my clients. They absolutely do not represent the official views of Scaled Agile Incorporated or my employer. And while you may gain some insight into SAFE, these are really not intended to serve as exam preparation material. So SAFE is a flow-based system and therefore how you sequence work is going to determine the wealth, the how much wealth, how much value you're going to be able to create. So the big question is, what should we do first? Here we have a team with several features that uh, they need to work on and are now trying to understand which of these features they should do first and what is a reasonable priority order. Now the classic approach is so-called HIPPO. Yes, there is an acronym for it. Highest paid person's opinion. So this is the executive who, or loudest person in the room who comes in and says, I don't care what anyone says, this is our marquee feature, this is our most important feature, this is my pet feature and we need to get it done. A more enlightened point of view may come from, for example, product management who, will, who does their research and says, look, our market analysis suggests that this is our killer feature. People will pay money for this. There also is, of course, the architect who will come in and say, you know, talk about risk reduction and opportunity enablement and say, you know, we need to understand it. We need to be able to do this so we can know that if this is even going to work. But what should we really do first? We've got all the comp competing points of view. So what we can look at here is maybe start trying to apply a little bit of what do we get and what do we have to give to implement these features. So if we look here, the shopping cart will pay us $10 when we get it done. The book detail will pay us five. And the flexible search will pay us 50. Well, based on just that analysis, it would suggest that we should do the flexible search. But is that correct? Because as one thing you can see here, that flexible search requires a lot of work to deliver. And that's really what weighted shortest job first is. It really is almost like the lazy person formula. Pick the low hanging fruit. What will give you the most value, as we used to say, the biggest bang for the least effort. So the formula really is for picking the low hanging fruit, value divided by effort. This is what I'm going to get. This is what I have to do to get it. So according to that analysis, the shopping cart is actually our best bet because we will get $10 for two days of work. So when we divide value by effort, we get five. Whereas divide the value of the flexible search by the effort, we get 1.67, which is saying that our best economic outcome is given to us by delivering the shopping cart first. So value is in weighted shortest job first is expressed as cost of delay, which was popularized by Donald Reinerston in his book, Product Development Flow. And he emphasized, if you 
only quantify one thing, quantify the cost of delay. Really, this was an admonition that very few of us actually really clearly understand the value that an item creates. And an effective way of understanding the value is to say, well, what if we don't do it, if we delay it? So when we have two features like A and B, if we delay A a month, what does it cost us? If we delay B a month, what does it cost us? Which, what does it cost more to delay? So that's how we come up with value. And there are three components to the cost of delay. Business value, time criticality, risk reduction, or opportunity enablement. Now, business value is what you traditionally think of as value, right? If we build it, it is either going to open up a new revenue stream for us, people are actually going to pay us money, or it will reduce our operating costs. Time criticality is really quite important because something may actually give us more money, but something may be time critical in terms of bank, you know, government regulations have changed, and therefore if we don't do this, we don't stay in business. Or in other, there may be uh, real issues of a contract gives us a hard date. Uh, I've also worked for clients where if you don't deliver on the fixed date, you might as well not have started at all. I once worked with a client who built software for conferences. If that conference started on March 8th, you could not deliver that software on March 9th. So time criticality is definitely a factor here. The other, of course, is risk reduction and opportunity implement. If we do this, it will reduce the risk. There is value to reducing risk. There is also opportunity enablement. So weighted shortest job first is about finding the low hanging fruit. It is really taking into account the cost of delay, which we said was value, divided by the effort. In this case, size. So in save, weighted shortest job first is given by cost of delay, which is a pro which is how we calculate value, and size, which represents our effort. Now this is a bit different from what is written in Reinerston's book, Product Development Flow, where he effectively calculated cost of delay divided by time. We're using size as a proxy because effectively we are usually sizing epics and features and capabilities so it is we it is readily available to us and also it is a reasonable fair proxy for our purposes so just a word about estimating size there is a mantra that i cling to and that is those who do the work size the work Right, so this means not only are the business people around the table trying to come up with cost of delay, but you need the technical people in there to say, look, this is how much work we're, we are going to have to do. Not how much you think we're going to have to do, how much we are going to have to do on this. So now let's just take a look at it. Let's see how this works. Like why does weighted shortest job first work for us? Like, what is it trying to tell? Why does it give a better economic outcome? Well, let's take a look at three features here. We got A, B, and C. A pays us $15, right? Cost of delay is 15. We have B, cost of delay is 5. C, cost of delay is 2. So if we were to prioritize this based strictly on value, obviously we'd want to do A first because that gives us the most value. Now, throw in the effort to earn that value and things change. We can see that A is a lot of work. It is a size is 20 and that drops WSJF down to 0.75 whereas B pays us 5. It's not a lot of work. It's WSJF is 2.5 so reprioritizing based on that this is the sequencing of work to get the best economic outcome. To demonstrate this, let's graph this. So here I have a graph, the value delivered, cost of delay represented on the Y, and the time or psi effort is on the X here. Now, if we are to do this based on, let's do A first because it gives us the best value. So we start working on A and 20 days later, it's there. 
Okay, I know we're approximating size is equal to day, something I tell people never to do, but, you know, go with it on this one for, for a bit. Now, we do B. And, of course, five days later on day 25, we start get earning the value for B, and then, of course, we get C. So that's our value delivery curve there, if we were to sequence A, B, and C. Now, let us, using WSJF, we're going to prioritize B first. So after five days, we, or two days, we start earning five units of value from B. Then we do C, which means two days later, day seven, we start earning value, or one day, we start earning value from C. And then finally, 20, day, 20 days later, we start getting value from A. That is our delivery curve. Now, just to highlight this, if I were to overlay our previous value delivery curve onto this one, you can see the gaps. Clearly, by not delivering A first, we gave up this bit of value here. But look at the value that we gave up if we had delivered A first. And this is the money we would have left on the table, sequencing A first. This is trying to demonstrate why using weighted shortest job first, taking into account the effort required to earn the value, is essential. We are getting a far better economic outcome with this prioritization based on weighted shortest job first than we would have just strictly prioritizing work based on value. So to summarize this first part, WSJF is an economically rational model for sequencing and prioritizing work. WSJF maximizes the delivered value by picking that low-hanging fruit. And we represented that low-hanging fruit by value divided by effort. Okay, in SAFE, value is represented as, co as cost of delay, which takes into account business value, time criticality, opportunity enablement, or risk reduction, and risk reduction. And then SAFE uses job size as a proxy for effort. Now that, is part, that ends part one of this video. Part two, we'll actually look at an example of how a team would go about calculating and using WSJF. Until then, I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. And as the safe agilists say, be safe.